Welcome to Sinister Heroes. I'm your host, Danny Iniquitous. Thank you for tuning in. If you're new to the channel, this is a channel about Dungeons and Dragons. We're trying to take a darker tone with everything we do here. So if you like edgy kind of content, definitely hit that like and subscribe button. A big thank you to our Patreon supporters. We love you guys. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. If you're interested in becoming a Patreon supporter, the link is in the description, as well as the link to our good friends at Critical Failures. We were part of a live stream game. Check us out Wednesday nights. With that out of the way, we're going to jump into this week's video. We're talking about the Murph. Folk. All right, merfolk also come from Planescape. We've been knocking them out for a little while now. We're almost towards the end. There's one more that I think is absolutely terrible, and then two more that I think are actually really good. Uh, but the merfolk are a very cool one. I'm very, very in favor of this. Uh, they are an amphibious race born and at home in the water, but comfortable on dry land. Humanoid in form, they have skin of ivory civil russet blue or deep purple long fins is sent from their backs their forearms calves and their fingers and toes are webbed their hair like growths on their hair are either thick and bristly like the needles of a sea urchin or long and wavy resembling fine seaweed in either case these growths typically typically range in color from red to warm brown to black and male merfolk have similar growths extending down their cheekbones like their fins kind of like or, or at least kind of those growths like that uh if you like the lokatha if you like the um <laughs> eddy of the fish races if you like the grong if you like um being underwater and needing that kind of special i need to be doused in water to survive this is like a better version of that uh, because you don't have to deal with that. You are prettier. Realistically, you just are. Uh, you are very cool. If you're going to be in a campaign where water might be prevalent, if you're going to deal with tritons and things like that, this is a very cool thing that de definitely kind of carries a certain, um, almost like a regal gravitas to, to that underwater world. Where you're like You're really pretty for a, a half mermaid man fish person uh i think it kind of incorporates kind of some of the concepts of the lokatha and really add in the triton uh, and kind of pull together really well uh they are more likely to be casters based on the way this um they have been built and the way their ability scores worked especially at this time when they were put together because this was before tasha's and before monsters of the multiverse but if you change out those ability scores i think you get a pretty awesome uh, mix of characters to be. Uh, so you do have a couple of options within this species. There are a couple of different subspecies. There are two printings of it, but one of them gives you creeds and the other one gives you a color associated to it. But two of the creeds match some of the colors and you get one additional one, which we'll go over. Um, but your ability score, when you start out, you get a charisma score increase of plus one. Uh, Merfolk, Merfolk, excuse me, mature at the same rate as humans do and age at around 20. They live considerably longer than humans, though, often reaching well over 100 years. There's no real cap, but you can definitely hit over 100, so take that into consideration. Merce, Merf, Merf, Oh, this is going to be hard. Most merfolk are neutral, living in close harmony with nature. So you'll see a couple of things that come up that kind of resemble that. Um, your base walking speed is 30 feet, and you have a swing speed of 30 feet. Uh, you can, you're can you amphibious, so you can breathe air and water. Uh, you can speak, read, and write common, and merfolk, and one additional language of your choice, signifying that you're a little bit more smarter or more... Um, inclined to speak to other species uh, you do have again a couple of sub races uh, the green merfolk and the Amiria or wind creed are the same uh, you do kind of fit that kind of similarly except for one thing changes uh, but i'll cover that uh, you gain a plus two to wisdom uh, you do get a couple of options to how you look um, because you are considered a green merfolk, so you generally have yellow chests and pale green faces and shades of dark blues and purple on their backs and limbs and patterns on their skin suggest colors of tree frogs common in the rainforest as their eyes are of orange, lime green, or sky blue, and their fins are relatively short and thick, and they can climb trees with ease, moving through undergrowth, and often wield magic to shape vines and branches at their will. Um, your ability score increases plus two, so you get a plus two, plus one, uh, wisdom, and then charisma. If you are the green merfolk, this is where you 
deviate. You have Mask of the Wild, like the Wood Elves. Uh, you can attempt to hide even though you are lightly obscured by foliage, heavy rain, falling snow, mist, or other natural phenomenon. I imagine just being in water would constitute for that. But if you choose the um, the Wind Creed, you gain Wind Creed manipulation, which gives you proficiency in deception and persuasion skills. Um, your final ability for this is you gain a cantrip of your choice from the Druid spell list uh, and wisdom as you spell casting for it. You can definitely pick Primal Savagery and deal acid damage as a melee thing and then kind of build yourself around something that might be melee oriented or, or at least carry a shield or something. Or in case you just wanted that option, it is a great cantrip to use. Uh, you can. There is also the Blue Merfolk, which also kind of works with the Water Creed. Um, which is pretty uh, accurately the same thing. Um, there's no real change in ability scores here. Uh, the blue one obviously is more blue with uh, burgundy or magenta chests on and on their faces with lighter shades of blue and purple everywhere else. Their eyes are red, orange, or blue, and their long, thin, and elegant fins resemble scarves or veils of fine fabric. They swim easily even upstream, and that kind of really doesn't make any difference, but... Uh, and clamber over rocks through rapids with ease. They prefer to dwell in shallow waters, but spend a fair amount of time on land as well. Your intelligence increases by two, uh, and you have this ability called Lore of the Waters, which gives you proficiency in history and nature, uh, which is slightly different than what you get. As with If you pick the Water Creed, which gives you the same intelligence scores, you instead get proficiency in Navigator's Tools and the Survivor skill. Depending on what you're looking to do, uh, that would kind of depict what proficiencies you get. Personally, I prefer History and Nature over Navigator's Tools and Survivor skill, but maybe you're in a seafaring campaign where this might be very beneficial to you, so picking up Navigator's Tools might be in your benefit. This gives you the ability to choose one wizard cantrip from the wizard spell list and intelligence is your spell casting modifier for it green flame blade booming blade um obviously are on that spell list so if you did want to do anything kind of melee or um build a kind of gish character where you incorporate those things this is a great way to pick them up very easily uh, and then the final one is another creed uh this is called the Kosi creed this is a creed with a trickster god um most of the merfolk will not actively say that this is what they are um but it is something that's not something particularly looked fond upon as tricksters can be very problematic uh, and they tend to be chaotic in that nature uh for those actions in this your abilities your charisma score increases by an additional one for a total of two and your intelligence score increases by one uh which makes you an interesting kind of circumstance for a character because you have a plus two to charisma plus one to intelligence again Tasha's Masters of the Mo Monsters of the Multiverse, uh, I would definitely take this and switch that out. Um, you do get Creed of the Trickster, which gives you proficiency in sleight of hand and stealth skills. And you gain one cantrip of your choice from the Bard spell list, and Charisma is your spellcasting ability for it, depending on what you do, would depict this. If you are using the this and you're using the newer 1D&D or 2024 Player's Handbook, Hopefully they keep True Strike the way it is, and True Strike works in the same fashion as Booming Blade or Green Flame Blade, where your attack deals radiant damage, but use your charisma for the spellcasting for it. Uh, if that works out, then you do have a great way to kind of use a very powerful uh, cantrip that makes you more of a gish kind of a character. It gives you that option to do something, especially if you wanted to heavily lean into charisma or spellcasting in that kind of a front. The Merfolk, again, this is a Planescape species. This comes from the Magic the Gathering universe. Definitely talk this over with your DM. This is a more stronger version of what the Planescape species have been, at least in my opinion. Again, you can differ. Obviously, I love to discuss it. Definitely let me know what you think. Um, if you like Lokatha, if you like Grong, if you like Tritons, definitely this gives you another option. If you like Sea Elves, it's all working really well to kind of build that kind of a character. I happen to really like this. I played a little Kotha recently, and it was awesome. Really enjoyed being one. Uh, I thought it was a lot of fun, so I'm kind of on this high of, of underwater stuff right now. That, and it's currently summer, so it's very hot, and being underwater sounds pretty good to me. Uh, that being said, we're going to bring this video to a close. If you've made it this far, 
definitely hit that like and subscribe. A big thank you to our Patreon supporters. We love you guys. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Uh, if you're interested in becoming a Patreon supporter, the link is in the description, as well as the link to our good friends at Critical Failures. Check us out Wednesday nights where we're part of a live stream game, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, with all that said and done, thank you for giving a spooky kid a chance.